Welcome guys, Mike Anderson here with Living Motion Monograms and the 1% Solution. And we are live here in the hundred, uh, in the hundred and first floor of our brand new studio. That's right. Why, why are we so high up? Why are we in such a huge building? I'm going to answer. It's because of you guys. That's right. The Living Motion Monograms family, the 1% Solution family, it is building, it is growing. It's going out of control and we needed more space. That's right. So today, today, we're going to be teaching you guys even more. The whole concept behind Living Motion Monograms is to give you guys that knowledge, give you guys that those tools in order for you to be able to do these, design your own creations, create your own ideas for your events. And that is what is important to me. So, uh, and today we're going to be taking that next step. We're going to be talking about rendering and what settings and stuff and what the heck all this stuff means. Because <laughs> I'll be honest with you, if you're uh, if you're a little uh, going a little crazy about it, uh, I don't blame you. It's taken a long time to figure out why, figure out all these settings and what the heck these things mean and what's the best one to use and what all these little sliders do. And it's because I'm not a videographer. I don't claim to be. I haven't studied this stuff. Uh, I've had to learn this along the way, and uh, the stuff I've learned, uh, I want to uh, I want to share with you guys. So that is basically what we're going to be, what journey we are going to be going on today. Uh, we're going to do a little. We're going to be doing a little bit of work with, um, you know, Sony Vegas. We'll do a little bit of work uh, with Photoshop. And uh, most importantly, be answering your questions live in the chat. So if you guys ha uh, aren't already, make sure you guys jump in on the live chat that we've got going on. And uh, the way you can do that is simply by logging into your uh, YouTube account or uh, uh, on a mobile device. You, get, you know, go into the YouTube app or on uh, onto the on the line. But you got to be logged in to be able to see the chat. At least that's what I'm. Uh, what I've understood over the past. So uh, I hope to see you guys in a, and, and feel free to ask your questions anytime and uh, we will definitely, definitely get to those. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, while well, we've got the studio, we're going to go and fire up a couple things. See if we can lag out our computer for the live stream here. Hope, hopefully you guys, uh, I'm hoping everybody's got a nice busy weekend coming up. You're going to be doing some fun stuff with your events. It is uh, getting pretty crazy, crazy this time of year. So it's we're, we're in the home stretch for the uh, for the year. And uh, hopefully all of us will get a little break as we continue. Um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and get get things cranked up here. We're going to go ahead and uh, let's let's jump into our main our main screen here. So here we are. All right, get a couple little things set up here. Make sure this is all set. All right, we got sound? Yeah. <laughs> all right. There we are. Okay. So first thing I want to do is let's go ahead and uh, we're going to jump into to Sony Vegas because I want to show you guys a couple things. Let's let's go ahead and uh, toss a couple things in here. Um, well, this is going to be for this week in here. And... I just need something up in, in the screen for this. There we are. Okay, so uh, one of the, I, I basically just needed some kind of media in here so that I can actually come in here, um, and we're just gonna click up here and uh, go to our files and render as because I want to start off and just show you guys how crazy this is. Um, first off, we'll get rid of my favorites here, but as we <laughs> let's expand this out. I mean, just first off, we've got okay. Uh, <laughs> We've got image sequence. We've got main concept. Main concept MPEG-1 and main concept MPEG-2. Panasonic P2. QuickTime 7. Sony. Uh, Sony MXF 
whatever all this stuff, but video <laughs> AVIs, obviously that's one that people recognize and Windows Media Video, they'll you'll recognize that. Most of the, uh, on, on most of this stuff, and by the way, I'm using uh, Sony Vegas 13 on this. So uh, you guys may be using like Movie Studio, which is fine. And these settings are, are absolutely, uh, most of these are all available inside uh, even the basic Movie Studio. Um, what you may have to do is uh, when you go to like the basic rendering is go to uh, and base and do like a customized template uh, or go to advanced um, on, on your tabs there. So um, I would show you guys, I don't have that installed on this computer um, to bring it up, but the, uh, the reason I, I'm not too worried about what program I'm using is because a lot of the stuff I'm going to be talking about today is going to be mainly around just understanding what these are. Uh, a lot of you guys like MP4, you, everybody knows MP4s. So MP3 is used for audio. MP4 is usually used for video. Uh, but like, for example, this has, we've got one, two, th three different MP4s here. Uh, and a lot of these are, are, are kind of more based towards, you know, so even the cameras and stuff that, um, are available out there, the, the type of files that they're, that you're working with and stuff. So, um, I, we're going to concentrate more on, um, for example, like Sony, uh, if we open up Sony AVC, which is the MP4 format, most of what I end up using for, um, rendering, you've got everything. It starts up, you know, internet 1920 by 1080. And these are just real quick settings. So if you are rendering a video down for, you know, stuff to, to put online or something, um, you can, these are pretty easy, um, quick settings, but if we go in and click one of them and, and we can come in here to customize template, we can take a look at what, like, for example, this template does. So uh, the first thing we're going to look at here is, is our, at the bottom is our video tab. And it just says that, okay, what format are we doing? Uh, ABC and then high definition for our frame size, basically that just means 1920 by 1080. Um, as we kind of continue down here, we've got profiles, we've got frame rates. Um, and, and, you know, to be honest with you, we, at least in the U S we're using NTSC. So it's 29.9. Uh, when I render stuff down, uh, most of the time I just, it's okay to just flip it over to 30 frames per second. So, um, if you end up, if it ends up asking you, you can just, you know, change that up a little bit. Uh, it's not going to do any harm. The, and then we, as we continue down, we've got filled order, upper, lower, just none. We just want progressive scan and pixel aspect ratio. This is something that it, it you only have one option here. It's, it's one, but as we get into windows media, it, they give us another option that I'll show you guys a little bit later as well. Uh, and then, um, our bit rate. So the bit rate is really going to help determine the size of the file. I, if, if you're using a media player or something, that's just having a hard time with such a large file, then the, by lowering this, uh, you can do it kind of a little bit at a time. Even, uh, you're going to notice that it, it's number one, I obviously, obviously the file is going to be smaller, but you're going to notice that it might have an easier time playing that video file. So the very largest file is not always the best unless your end product is going to be just as a, uh, file that you're going to play on your computer or, um, a file that, you know, you're going to end up rendering in onto a disc. And then for those of you who use Sony, um, you've also got uh, encode mode, and this is going to be just all based on your computer. What do you have in it? What kind of graphics card do you have in it and why, uh, Photoshop just decided to launch, but we'll let it go. Um, you know, so what video cards you have installed in the computer, how fast is the computer? Uh, what I'm actually doing a little live stream, uh, here with, uh, my, uh, secondary computer, which is just, a an all in one MSI gaming, um, screen. So everything's kind of built in. Um, so I usually on this, I'm just using CPU only there. There was a glitch in the past and hopefully they got it fixed where at least with, with Sony Vegas, um, you, if you tried to do like automatic or render with, you know, GP with the GPU graphics processor, you know, the, it would just freeze up. It just stopped rendering. So, um, you may, if you're having trouble with rendering, you may just, you know, have to click, uh, render using CPU only, 
we got our audio. Audio is going to be, uh, uh, if, if it's for monograms, it doesn't matter. Uh, just be, uh, but when we're doing video and we want really great sound and stuff, then, um, I'm going to suggest, uh, at the minimum, probably 192. If you have great, you know, audio, great sound, um, to it, uh, on the recording, um, when we're rendering like audio for when I'm doing a mix for an event, I'm all my, I'm rendering all my files at 320. Uh, so it just, it, it's, that's what I have all my, uh, songs and stuff rendered down as for, uh, uh, in my music collection anyway. Uh, and we got stereo, so we don't have to worry about 5.1 on this, our system, um, uh, not much we have to worry about here. And then, uh, of course our project settings. And if you're using Sony, this is going to be a really important one because this is one that, uh, tricks a lot of people up and it has with a lot of my friends and, and um, where they have all their settings set to high resolution, you know, maybe HD, and then they hit render. And all of a sudden it, you know, they, they look at the video and it's just, it, it's grainy. It is blown out. It just, it looks horrible. And most of the time it's because under this project setting tab, we've got our, you know, video render quality. And it, this says use project settings this you always want to have is best. Okay. So, and, and here's, here's why I'm going to go ahead and hit okay on this. Um, and I'm going to close our render menu down for a second because we've got our preview window here in, in the top right corner, just above that is a little drop down tab. And this gives us the option of when we are rendering video, what, what basically how, how good our preview is. So if I'm, you know, don't want my computer taxed down by, um, something like, uh, you know, j just, you know, intense files or something. Um, then I can go up here and I can go draft and like auto. And what'll happen is you can kind of see, it just gets a little grainier and, you know, for basic editing, if I don't need to see, uh, you know, really high resolution on this, then it's not going to make a you know difference during the editing process, but it just won't tax my computer as much and bog it down. Uh, but the problem is, is that when I work, when you work in that, and if we have it on draft, and we go and say, "Hey, render as," and as we go, you know, back into that project tab, if this is set to use project settings, what happens is it go it basically uses that setting in your preview, and that is where the trouble you know lies where now it's rendering it down as in draft version and it just messes you up and it just makes you go crazy because you you're looking at it going it just looks so much better here so it'll it'll it basically will just bog it down there um but i also going to show you guys when you first get started um we can in here we can also go into prop let's go into uh Let's make sure we got the right one here. That's it. Okay. So options on our mini bar and preferences. And so this is our options for our general options. I'm gonna, I lied. All right. So we're going to go into file and then properties. There's two different properties. So this is our project properties. Um, you can set this up to where it'll just, you know, every time it opens, it'll open with the same thing. And um, go up to, this will give you the options of going to video here and we'll drop this menu down It just got a ton of stuff. So if you are working on a project that is, uh, uh specific, maybe it, it's not, you know, eight, 1920 by 1080 as far as resolution. And that's like, you know, widescreen, uh, or HD. But if you're working on a project that is going to be for, um, internet or for a different size, um, you know, four by three projection screen, then you can start with these properties here. And if you change this, then your preview window obviously will change and um, you can do your editing to that size uh, so that you get an idea of what it's actually going to uh, look like on the screen. So right underneath that, we can also do anything custom we want. So this would be uh, for this actual template, this is just HD 1080. Um, 60i. So we've got um, 1920 by 1080. So as we know, is the uh, HD version here. And then um, 
in field order, upper field first, uh, pixel aspect ratio is one, there's square. So this is where we get a lot of different ones. Um, you know, it, NTS, NTSC, PAL, all this stuff that comes into play here, um, HD video, but for mainly everything we're doing, um, unless you're a videographer, then you would know what settings to use for some of the other, um, you know, cinematic effects. Uh, but we're just going to use square here. Frame rates 29.9. And uh, moving in, we've got um, full resolution render quality. Good. Uh, we can change this to best. Motion blur type ga um, Gaussian there. And then de interlay. So we've got um, blend fields. Just source media to better match project or render settings. That's fine. Um, and then down here, you can also go ahead and you know, as far as uh, assign a folder if you want. If you're running a uh, S like a solid state drive, um, you know, put this folder on your solid state drive. That way, it'll just uh, when it's doing pre rendering and stuff, it's gonna that you wherever your fastest drive is that's that's not like completely full. <laughs> that's the, that's what you're gonna want to end up using for that. So. Um, and then you can, if you want, you can s click the little box to start all new projects with these settings and that way they'll all be exactly the same for it. So we hit apply. Um, oh, and then at the top, you've got some other tabs so you can change your audio. So, um, stereo, let's see, we've got, we are set at 48, which is fine. Um, bit 16, uh, resample stretch quality, good. And uh, recorded files folder, and then you can assign a folder if you want for anything new. That that way you always know it's in that. that that's basically what that setting's for. So uh, whatever you're going to be sending it off to there, uh, whenever you do a render, if you don't choose, so it'll it's our default folder there. All right, perfect. Okay, and then under the other options is where um, you can you know t take a browse through this and just see this explains you can check and uncheck boxes uh much like a lot of the other softwares for like djing where uh, it gives you options of how you want it to interact um and some of these will uh i'll probably have to hold other live stream just on these settings uh which is uh not not a bad idea i think um so we'll go ahead and close that out here uh, so we've got our render settings. Now let's, let's talk about what you're rendering. If you're doing a video and let's go ahead and let's see where my other folder is. And let's just, yeah, if we're, let's say we're doing a video. I just need to pull a video clip up here for us. All right, let's go ahead and match those. There we are. All right, so now our, we've got this nice little binary. Uh, video loop that we're, we've used for a couple different kind of technology monograms here. Um, so if we're going to be doing, say, uh, the first step on this is going to be figure out what it is you're going to be project, uh, pro you know, projecting with, um, think about the media player, think about, uh, or if you're using a laptop, it, it, what, is it windows media? Is it quick time? Is it what's, what are you going to be actually playing the file with? Because the type, uh, file that you render it down as, uh, is going to be that, that it's obviously a huge influence on that. So uh, I'm going to go over a couple basic ones here. If, for example, if we're going to be do it using uh, QuickTime, then I'm going to render this video down. I'll highlight this. Let's go to render. And I've got some uh, 
some custom ones and favorites that I've got saved here. But um, as an example for if we uh, let's take this off and go to so we've got Sony AVC and that's what I use for MP4s uh, for QuickTime. And we're going to scroll down. Let's go ahead and find something. So the, let's see. Let's see monograms and we'll go to customize templates. So these are the these are the settings that I end up using for this. And um, under video format, we've got ABC. Uh, we've got frame size, which is the 1920 by 1080, because we're going to be showing an HD. Uh, allow source to adjust frame size. No, uh, we don't want to do that. And profile, we've got a uh, high um, coding. Uh, we've got, and, and a lot of these are just going to give you one option. So, um, based on the rendering frame rate 30, uh, we've got set up here. So either 29.9 NTSC or 30 is fine. Um, and then we continue down, we've got filled order. So now this is, you know, progressive scan. We just, uh, on under filled order, uh, just set it to none. Uh, and the at pixel ratio, we got one option, which is one. And then, um, our bit rate itself. Um, I found that 16, you know, 16 million is r really nice. It, it cleans as far it's really clean on the, as far as the image and it um, uh, plays on nearly almost everything. So it's not too big and bulky. Um, and for my system, I'll, you know, just render with CPU only uh, audio doesn't matter because I have it set low for, because we usually don't do uh, unless we're doing some kind of sound files on there. Uh, we've got our system um, and project. So remember under project, if you're going to do a template like this, we've got render our video render quality. We're going to do best. Make sure that's set to best. Uh, 3D mode, we're not worried about. Uh, and so the, that that's basically how I get that set up for our MP4s. Uh, and again, if you're using Movie Studio, though, these settings are in there. It's just a matter of being able to go into the advanced settings. Um, and I'll have to uh, bring in, bring in a laptop that's got movie studio on it so that we can, uh, I'll upload a, uh, a video that kind of shows step-by-step -step how to make those, uh, advanced adjustments on that because they kind of hide them a little bit. So it's, you just got to keep your eyes open for it. Um, and then if, we, for example, if we're going to be doing, you know, a windows media file, uh, a lot, some players have a hard time playing MP4s for some reason. Um, and usually it's the little media players. And I think it has more to do with the speed of the memory stick because the, if it's too large of a file and it's, you're on a memory stick that's slow, it's just not, you know, transferring as fast. So just make sure those memory sticks are, uh, on the high end or high speed, uh, side of things. We've got, let's go in and I'll show you guys um, our Windows media settings here. So I've got a couple of them set up here. So I've got uh, the first one, 1920 by 1080, and I've got best, but let me take off the favorites because I want to show you all the options. We've got Windows media and then these basically, you can see that not 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 just the size of the, uh, the video. So it's 720, um, as far as resolution with 30, uh, frames per second for a uh, picture, the, or 30 P, um, and 1080 is typically what I'll render everything down in, unless I'm going to be just make it a quick video for, you know, toss up on, to have on like a Facebook page or something, uh, maybe on a website where I want the file to be small, uh, and easily quickly loaded. I know it's going to be on like mobile devices or something, then I'll use one of these smaller settings. But if I, for, even if I go into uh, HD 1080 uh, and we hit customize templates, let's see what it says. So this one's a little different. It starts off with audio, shows you it's uh, the template itself is at 192 for the bit rate, which isn't bad. Uh, our format, Windows Media 9, and this is also where you can kind of, uh, um, uh, change it if someone's using an older media player, but usually not an issue. And then you've got image size, high definition. So uh, you'll notice it's 1440 by 1080, which is a weird size, right? 
not it's not 1920 by 1080. And that's a re there's a reason. It's because of the pixel aspect ratio right below. Remember when earlier we were talking about how the it, basically this is the size of the pixels instead of having pixels being square um, as an example like one inch by one inch if we had a pixel that was one inch by one inch on there then what will happen is we would obviously need more pixels to create that same dimension of 1920 by 1080 well this one the width is 1440 but look at the pixel size that's 1.3 and that means that we need less pixels in order, but the pixels themselves are larger. Uh, and so that was one of those things where I noticed it saves, it, it basically helps create a smaller file. Um, yes. Uh, and I'll show you in my render settings the big difference of what I did with this um, to get even better image files for uh, Windows Media. Um, and then we've got our bitrate. This is kind of a real easy cheat sheet. So if you need to go, okay, or you want it to be rendered down for someone who's still using a modem uh, dial up, then uh, this will compress it. it it's going to affect the quality a lot, but um, as far as your target bitrate. So uh, we just do internet LAN and it says, it, you know, it's set for eight megabits per second. Uh, project. Remember project settings, we want to always do best. So um, uh, for vi video render quality, no matter what one you are using, just to make sure it is going to be rendering in the best po possible. So that's just the template itself. I want to go into say one of them that I use here. So we're going to customize this template that I have. And let's look at the settings. So again, audio set the same. Um, so we're typically not doing audio. Now, this particular one I set up, this is kind of during testing. Um, you'll notice that like it's high definition, it's 1440 by 1080, which was the same setting as before. And then I switched this over to uh, square. So one on, on our pixel aspect ratio. Uh, and then when I rendered it, I got really, you know, very, very <laughs> more squared image. I got, I had less um, pixels across the screen. So it was kind of smushed. <clears throat> and so it didn't give me that um, overall desired effect I wanted of uh, uh, the high definition widescreen. So um, what I had done different, and you can make changes like this um, if you want, is that uh, the first thing that we end up doing was finding, let's see here, we uh, we were gonna do we're gonna go down to uh, image size and hit custom, and that's gonna let us uh, make some adjustments to our pixels on width, which we do 1920, and then our height is uh, 1080 already, and that's where we'd switch it over to square. Um, I'm not I'm not claiming to be an absolute genius when it comes to uh, video editing and stuff. I I've, I've gotten by, I've done a lot of uh, uh, research on it, but um, there's probably some videographers out there and uh, uh, experts that are just laughing at me right now, which is, which is fine. Right? <laughs> I don't mind being, the exp uh, being made fun of at their, uh, my own expense. So, um, but if I can help you guys out and get you better, better uh, renderings, ren renderings for your events, then uh, hopefully this will help you out. So we've got one as a, for our pixel aspect ratio, uh, video smoothness, uh, sharp is going to help crispen things up so that we get nice sharp lines there. Uh, bit rate. And this is where I also kind of switch things up where instead of the eight megabits per second, uh, I, you know, I bumped this up to 14, uh, and that's, it's going to give us a bigger file size. But again, this is one of those things that you can play with. If you're playing a video on your laptop and it's, hesitating or you know almost looks like it's buffering because it's trying to load the file then you might want to render it down as a little bit smaller uh it's it going to be a little less quality but what's most important is that it's not the video isn't jerky and glitchy so take a look at that we've got our um and our project settings set to best of course and then once i 
you know, make these settings, what you want to do is come up here and and, and label it as something. So, um, you know, this is set to best. Uh, we can do this as test and then save it. And that way we know that we can always come back to that one. Um, and then the little stars next to the, uh, next to uh, the names are, are very helpful. So if we uh, highlight the star, then at the top, we can go just show favorites only. And it cleans up that whole menu. It's just the stuff that we normally would use for, for different things. So I've got everything from the MP4s, our other MP4s um, for main concept um, to, you know, the Windows media file, AVIs, stuff like that for um, special requests on media type. All right. So that should help you guys out a lot with just the understanding those render settings on, on doing videos. Um, the, I guess we can go ahead and well, I'm gonna close this. Just condense this a little bit. The next thing is going to be, what do we do for like monograms? Um, and again, the first thing, that is going to come up. None of, these are, none of these are in the same spot as before. That's why. So we'll start. We're going to, we're going to open one up from scratch here. And uh, in, in Photoshop, it didn't matter what version you can go to new. All right, and as we got new here, we've got our window set up. And um, a lot of them are gonna have, depending on the Photoshop version you're gonna be running, um, some might have like templates set up, uh, you know, for like a four by six photo or something like that. Um, but you can, this is uh, Photoshop CC. So with the uh, subscription to Adobe. And so it's just always the kind of most up-to-date version. Um, but with this, you can actually create your own. So if I went to up here at the top to saved, we can actually see some of the ones I have saved. Uh, and we've got like 1200 by 600 for um, our pixels, uh, which is kind of very similar to like video with, with 1920 by 1080. And I actually have that here as well. So. If I've got the 1920 by 1080 or uh, Ultra HD monograms, which is the 3840 by 2160, remember we're going to be using projectors to do this. So the first step is to go, okay, what are what what is the uh, you know the resolution we're going to be projecting at? Is your you know projector when you hook it up to your computer, you can always go in and right click on the desktop and and once you have it running, and go to display settings. And as we open this up, you'll be able to see that we've got a uh, second screen set up, which is very, you know, similar to your second screen here, which would, is what it would look like with the projector connected to your laptop. Uh, the resolution is 1920 by 1080. Uh, some projectors though, aren't 1920 by 1080. They're, I don't know, they, they've got, uh, some are different, basically different levels. Some are made, made for computers and stuff, which um, could be, um, uh, some of these other resolutions that I've got set up here. So like 1280 by 800, maybe it's not H, maybe it's not an HD projector. Um, what's the benefit of, uh, creating, you know, a monogram in ultra HD 3840 by 2160. Well, if your computer can handle it, basically you're not going to be projecting at that resolution, but it's going to give you, um, uh, a very crisp image. We're going to give the best possible image uh, to start with, at least, uh, that's going to be going out to the projector. So uh, if your projector is, uh, say, the you know 1280 by 800, it's kind of a waste to obviously design an Ultra HD. Uh, if you've got an HD projector, it's 1920 by 1080, then, you know, you might see, a, you might see a little bit of a difference between the two files, uh, that you're showing. So we've got, um, when I'm doing a, a doing a design, uh, I do two different formats and I do JPEG and I do PNG for, for, uh, customers. 
And it's mainly because for you guys, I create five different sizes and um, in JPEG and five different sizes in PNG. Um, so let's go ahead and open up right here and we're going to open up a Let's see if there's one in here we can use. So I may design, if we go in and to the top and go into a image and go to canvas size, it'll show us that this canvas size that I'm working with is 1920 by 1080. I always start my designs in, as we you know with this size. Um, all the templates are in that size, uh, except for the Ultra HD ones. And they are, uh, and the and the main reason behind it is because, um, you know, that that's what I'm going to save my JPEG images as. Most of your laptops, the screen resolution is going to be 1920 by 1080. And if you, for example, save this as a desktop backdrop, I want it to match what's going to be on your computer. So we've got um, our first image here. And let's see what we're able to edit here. All right. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you're going to be um, doing your final size with. Uh, you just want to start with the largest uh, template that you're going to be doing so that you, cr you create your text and everything in the largest possible size that fits that large template. Uh, we are... All right. So we just kind of want to make some changes here. Um, we can... Oh, too big. All right, so let's do that. And the first thing we can do is go up here to file and we're gonna go ahead and hit save as. So it'll give us some different options. Um, down at the bottom under saves file type, it's gonna, by default, it's Photoshop if it's a Photoshop file here, unless you just opened up a JPEG, then it, it'll probably be a default JPEG. The, um, so our first thing is gonna be JPEG. So we're gonna select JPEG. Uh, and that will that uh, is pretty basic. It's going to save it as a JPEG image. So we go into and we'll just go to desktop. So we do test one, hit save. And typically, what I do is in order to make different sizes, you can go ahead and um, select the layers. And there are tutorials on <coughs> Photoshop on the uh, on the YouTube channel, so make sure you guys check those out. And if you haven't already, hit that. You know, if you're if you're interested and you want to get more content and more information, um, you know, subscribe to the channel. Would really appreciate you. Uh, love to have you in the family here. And that way, you get uh, if you hit the notification icon next to subscribe, uh, it, it's going to let you know whenever we do live streams or or at least when new video content is uploaded. So new tutorials on Photoshop, Photoshop. I do Photoshop and Photoshop Elements. Um, we're going to be doing Sony Vegas here very, very soon. And uh, everything from uh, on projectors and and, uh, um, and projection mapping, you name it. Uh, and if there are ideas that you guys want covered, things you want uh, tutorials done on, you know, let me know. P toss it down in the comment section. Uh, I read all those. I respond to them all. And uh, it's going to help kind of shape the content of the uh, channel because that's what this is. It's, you know, this channel is for you guys. Um, okay, so we've got, I highlighted our layers over here and the first thing we're going to go and rest rasterize so that then we can go ahead and merge the layers now now that we have emerged one of the things i can do is hit Control t and what that allows us to do is simply grabbing the corner and dragging it making it a little bit smaller and so this is how by not changing uh we're changing the text 
itself, but not the background or the actual size of the canvas is how we're going to create our multi sizes so that when you get to your event, if you are not obvious, the first thing that is going to be important, if, if the image is too large at your event, try and use the optical uh, zoom on the projector, which is usually that ring right just on the lens. Uh, and make that image as small as possible because that's going to keep your resolution, but it's going to kind of concentrate the light so that it will actually make the image brighter if it's uh, uh, not zoomed out all the way. So we've got, we'll go to desktop here. And then if it's still too large at your event, um, that's one of those reasons why I do multiple sizes for you or that you should plan on creating multiple sizes ahead of time. So we'll just do a few here. Let's save this. JPEG again, desktop. And our three sizes. And this should be able to show us. So let's go full screen on this. It's just with the uh, the player here, but it'll give you it'll give you the concept behind it. So when we're doing our we're at the event and it is showing, uh, you know, we we pop this up. It's still too large. Instead of like redoing the design or trying to move the projector closer if it's in the best possible spot then the next thing you could do is just go to the next smaller size and that just makes the the font or the template itself um uh at least the design smaller on the wall again next one down and that's kind of why i do five different sizes uh obviously the first thing to do is is i, I just want to make try and go as close as possible because it's going to make your image brighter it's going to make it look better um, is if we're forced to project from a farther distance away to keep that projector out from like in the middle of a traffic area, then that's where you want to, um, put it in the best possible spot, uh, and then take it from there or whatever size you need to do. Because this, by the way, you know, that is, you know, full resolution, uh, 10, 1920 by 1080. But remember with projection, the farther back you are, the bigger the pixels are, and that degrades the quality of image you're projecting. And if you're not running an HD projector, the 1920 by 1080, then your pixels are going to be bigger, you know, right off the bat anyway. So in order to make that, you know, larger size screen, they're just, they're, they're uh, going to create a, uh, a little less resolution. So um, if we have to move back, those pixels are bigger. That means the guests have to be far standing farther away from the image or, you know, being farther away from what we're projecting in order for it to be clear in uh, nice crisp lines. Because the closer they get, even if they're, you can see, you know, you start to see that resolution in there and, and the jaggedness of the design. So as we, same thing as you're, if you're in a room and you get really close to a design, um, a lot of you may have kind of noticed that, you know, the, the edges might be jaggy, uh, or jagged. Is jaggy a word? We check jag Yeah. Yeah. Jaggy. I, I don't know how to spell it. All right. We'll, we'll check that out for you. <laughs> the, um, and so if we have the exact same resolution and we make the image smaller, I, it doesn't give us better resolution. It's just making the image smaller. So. Um, uh, since we're projecting from farther back, those, uh, pixels are bigger, which gives us a uh, worse looking resolution. All right. So we got that closed there. Now that is what, so I say, uh, what I was saying is, you know, I save it as JPEG for, uh, most of those, um, media players, computers, stuff like that, that we're going to be playing it off of. A lot of uh, projectors even have the ability to go and put an image just onto a memory stick and play it right off the memory stick without having to have a media player, without having to have a computer. It just makes things convenient. They do kind of a slideshow. And for that, you just want to make sure you get the right size. So uh, first thing is you could always just design it in the native resolution. At least you'll know that it'll play that. Uh, and that goes back to uh, where... We can go to new up here. Let's create a new file. 
uh, and go into our well, pre-saved. And that's why there's, you know, I've got one that's 1280 by 800, uh, another one that's 1200 by 600. Uh, it's just because different projectors have kind of different needs. And if, for example, your projector was 1280 by 800 as far as the resolution, and you're using a image file that is 1200 by 600 that there's a there's a chance that there's going to be two bars you know one on each side that could be a different color if the back you don't have the background on your projector set to black then it might show like you know those blue blue boxes or something or blue lines on each side because uh, the image it just isn't big enough to fill that screen so or you might have to zoom in digitally with the projector so that's going to be important to see if your projector will do a digital zoom uh, and that might fix the problem. So we'll go, a lot of them are the uh, 1280 by 800, uh, but check your manual check, see what the specs are. And um, the next thing we're gonna do here is, so this is our blank canvas. I'm gonna show you guys how to save it for PNG. Uh, and the reason I say save for PNG is that mo a lot of projectors, they just vary so much. So some of them do in a really great image if you're using a PNG file. PNG is typically more efficient than uh, like a JPEG image. Uh, they're just bigger files. So it, they tend to look a lot cleaner if you're playing it off a memory stick. Uh, and it, uh, it's it's just because projectors don't, they don't have really great processors in them in order to, you know, show images off of a, uh, USB drive. And that's why I'm like such a big advocate for like the PC stick and uh, like the, it, you'll on the, uh, you know, look up the link on the channel for the Asus PC stick. Uh, it's the TS10, I believe. Uh, it's just a great little, you know, uh, all, it looks like a large memory stick. It plugs into the HDMI port on your, on your projector or, you know, TV or screen or whatever you want to plug it into. And it just turns it into a Windows 10 PC. Uh, you know, they just keep every couple months a new, new and improved version of the PC stick comes out, and you know, they're it's not something you want to game off of uh, or do a live stream with. It just doesn't have a ton of processing power, but for showing images and for showing, you know, a, a video loop, does an amazing job. And it, you know, Windows Media Player does a phenomenal job at looping video, so it doesn't like hiccup at the end um, or give you a little slight pause like some of the media players do. Uh, I, pretty much all the media players I've ever tried um, do that. They, there are some incredible media players that are like three, four, five hundred dollars $500 that they use for signage and stuff that have the processing power where it just doesn't have a glitch at the end of the loop and uh, can do a great job with that. So you can uh, spend that money or uh, have a full Windows 10 PC for like about 110, 120 bucks. Um, just add a little wireless keyboard in your set. So, okay, we've got our, our template here. Now, for PNG, I've got this set for the 1280 by 800. Um, and one of the things we can do is just grab from our other file, the image of our monogram, and um, we can resize this. I talk about resizing in our uh, Photoshop tutorial and the Photoshop elements tutorial on the uh, on the channel here. So we got this nice and big. Um, and then at this point, what we can do is do the exact same process. We're going to get save as we'll go into uh, and select our PNG option. And if PNG is not an option in there, I'm going to show you why I don't want you guys getting all um, going crazy because PNG is not an option. Uh, what you want to do is come back to the main menu here and then go to image and we're going to go into uh, mode. So our image mode here, uh, this is set to RGB. If your image mode is set to CMYK, it will not save as a PNG file. Just not, it, it doesn't, um, doesn't work. So it has to be set to RGB. You can switch it in the middle of your, um, uh, in the middle of your designing and stuff, it's not going to make much of a difference at all. Just make sure that's set to RGB and then go back and hit save as, and that, that, uh, option should pop up because you only have a few options, JPEG being one of them for CM, uh, CMYK. So we got PNG, 
And then all we have to do is just label these. So that's our big size. So that would be five. We go in here, do an X size down. We have to select PNG again. Let's go four. All right. And we'll do one more. And three. So this is going to give us the exact same option. So if you're playing off a memory stick, um, try both. I, do the exact same design in JPEG and then do it in PNG format and run it on your computer or on your projector on the memory stick. See which one looks the best because it is hit and miss. I, I don't know why, but some of them, they just look better as JPEGs. And some of them look better as PNG files uh, and never been able to figure it out. So our first one pop up. I got to get this over here. Let's go full screen. So here's our first one, our second one, and our third one. But yet the actual canvas stays the exact same size. Um, and you know, if you're if you are running Windows or something like, um, actually, I can close this out and give you an example. So if I've got set stuff set up as my uh, second screen. Um, if you've got your laptop plugged in, say, uh, what? Are, let's say you're using your uh, laptop for DJing, uh, and you're like, oh, I don't, you know, I don't want to run another program while I'm DJing because I'm afraid it's gonna um, bog it down or something. I plug in your projector. You, you're gonna end up going into uh, your display settings. Make sure that it's extended so you have a second screen here, and um, on that, then once it's extended, you can, you know, just go down, check your resolution. There is a catch to doing it this way. I'll tell you in a second. So, so it's 1920 by 1080. And if I want to check my main screen, that is also 1920 by 1080. So they match, which is important. Um, and then what I can do, we've got living motion monograms here, but if I right click on this file and I just hit save as desktop background, what's going to happen? It's going to toss up that image right up right up on our desktop. Now, my second screen, I'm never going to use during my event, but it doesn't matter because, you know, if there's nothing on it, your DJ software and stuff is going to be on your main laptop screen. That just stays that way all night. And nobody, you know, it's not going to do anything except show this monogram image. If I'm, you know, this is too big for where I'm projecting, I can just go to the next size down and do that again. So this desktop background, it got smaller. Let's try it one more time here. Set as desktop background. Boom. Easiest way to do it. Really, really easy. But you do have to have, uh, you know, have the projector plugged into that laptop. So you're either going to be running cables or you're going to be doing, like I use the HD Flow. Um, and the one they have available is the HDS 300 um, by Peerless. And I've used that thing for years. Um, and the, the, that's the new one. I've used the uh, HDS 200 for years and um, the HDS 300 has some, you know, updates to it for um, eight addition, another additional HDMI and actually has a video out on it, which is really nice on the uh, transmitter. So this basically allows us to just have a second screen just for the monogram, just to have the monogram up. Um, and it's not going to take up any more uh, processes for your, uh, for your computer. And then you just want to make sure it, the other thing is if you're doing it this way, um, and you notice like the menu at the bottom, sometimes on your second screen, you're going to have the menu bar pop up. It's going to be at the bottom on the second screen. You don't have to, you can right click on it. What you do is go to that screen. Well, we're on my main screen here, but if this was my second screen, you're going to right click on that and I'm going to right click on my second screen here because no, that's not what right click on my second screen and I'm going to now it's not gonna let me do it because there's no toolbar. So right click on your toolbar that has appeared on your second screen and we're going to go to taskbar settings. Okay. And this is going to show you 
uh, you know, a couple options. So what, what happens is down here under multiple displays, just shows taskbar and all displays. So that you want to turn off and that way it'll just be on your main display. Um, and there won't be any, you know, taskbar at the bottom being projected. Um, and the other issue I was telling you about where the reason you want to check your resolution and just make sure let's do a display settings. You want to make sure your resolution for both screens, your projector and your laptop are the same. So 1920 by 1080 here. If the second screen was my projector, it'd be 1920 by 1080. And the reason they, they need to be the same resolution is because if your projector is a lower resolution than your laptop screen, remember this image is probably going to be on your main display. And whatever is on your uh, projector, if the projector is a lower resolution, your second desktop, it, this is going to appear different. This is going to be, there and there are some options um, for your desktop if we do personalize where we've got it set you know picture and some of the different settings we've got fit where it'll fit that file size we've got stretch where no matter what size it is it'll stretch it out until it goes um, tile where get this out of the way here it starts to do multiples um, but typically you want to do fill or fit. If you do, if you do uh, fit and they're both the same resolution, it's going to look great. It's not going to be altered. If you have a lower resolution projector, what might end up happening is that it cuts off the, the monogram image uh, a little bit. And what you may have to do is a quick fix behind it is to go to just the smaller size, uh, you know, that you've created so that, you know, the left and right side of the monogram isn't cut off, but it's, you know, just in the center of the screen there. Uh, and that's just kind of a quick workaround to it. So there's our PNGs. There's some tips for uh, putting those projectors up on or putting the uh, images up on the screen itself. Let's go back into personalize. See if it's even here anymore. There it is. There's my, there's the one I want. Oh, and it went away. There we are. All right. So I definitely appreciate you guys being here today. And, uh, you know, if you guys, again, if you have any questions you want to see, there's certain things you want to see on the live stream itself or questions you want answered, tutorials that you want made, um, you know, let me know in the comment section because I want to you know, I'll be able to bump those up to the front of the line and just get those knocked out for you um, just to help you guys out. So, um, Again, if you guys do have any questions, let me know. I, I appreciate you guys coming in, being here with me today. And, um, you know, go out there, rock those events this weekend. Have fun doing it. And we will see you guys on the next live stream. Have a good day.